Hi, my name is Lalenya. I'm a product support specialist with Autodesk. In this video, I will be showing how to create a network deployment for 3D Studio Max. There are a few steps you want to take to prepare for your deployment. First, you'll want to set up your network license manager before you install your client workstations. Please refer to the network licensing guide for complete details or watch the quick start video, How to Set Up a Network License Manager for 3D Studio Max. You will also want to set up a network share. Shared folders are required for network installations. The network share is created before you run the installation wizard. If you do not know how to create a network share, please see How to Create a Network Share in the Network Administrator's Guide. You will also want to check on your permissions. You must have full control permissions set for your shared folder when you are creating your deployment images. During deployment, read permissions are necessary to access the network share, and administrative permissions on the workstation are required where the program is deployed. You will also want to check the system requirements. You will want to make sure that all of your client workstations meet the minimum system requirements for 3D Studio Max. Please refer to the installation guide for complete details. So to begin creating a network deployment, you'll want to insert the 3D Studio Max or 3D Studio Max Design install DVD. If Auto Run does not start the installation wizard, navigate to your DVD ROM and click the setup.exe file to open the installation wizard. In the installation wizard, click, click on Create Deployments to begin. On the Begin Deployment page, you will need to specify a deployment location, a deployment name, and determine whether or not you would like a 32-bit or 64-bit deployment. You can either browse to a location or you can enter a path to the network share. This will be the location that the users install the program from. You will also want to specify a deployment name. This name will be the shortcut that your users will use to install the product. So I'm going to name it Max 2010. And finally, you'll want to choose the kind of deployment. I'm going to go ahead and set up a standard 32-bit deployment. On the next page, you'll want to choose which products you want to include in the deployment going to go ahead and leave it with the defaults which will install 3D Studio Max 2010 32-bit as well as all the components, back burner, and the tutorial files. Next you will want to review the software license agreement. Select your country or region, review the license agreement, and then to proceed you must select I accept and click Next. On the product and user information screen you will want to enter your serial number, the product key. Both of these can be found on the DVD or in the email that you received regarding your product. You will then enter the first name, last name, and organization name. Please note that the information here is permanent and is displayed in 3D Studio Max or 3D Studio Max Design under Help About on your computer. You cannot change this information later without uninstalling the product so you will want to make sure that you enter the correct information now. When you have entered the details, click Next to proceed. Under General Deployment Settings, you can choose whether or not log files are created on the network and on the client machine. When you choose to create a network log, you also have to specify where the log file is created by entering either a valid UNC path or a hard-coded path on your network. The network log file is optional. The folder where the network log resides must be a shared folder where users who install the program have changed permissions. Otherwise, success or failures for user installations cannot be written to the log. You will notice that by default, it has added the path to the deployment that I specified earlier and added a subfolder for the log. For the client logs, it will be created in the temp directory of each client workstation if you choose to create a client log. You can also choose whether or not the client installations will be run in silent mode 
and whether or not the client workstations will be involved in the Customer Involvement Program. For more information about the Customer Involvement Program, please click on this link. When you are done making your selections, click Next to proceed. On Review, Configure, Create Deployments. We're going to click on Configure to customize our deployment. You can choose to create a deployment for either a standalone license type or a network license. For a network license, you need to specify the server model. We're going to go with the default basic setup of a single license server. And then you also need to specify the name of the server that will run the Network License Manager. So you can either browse to the server location or you can enter the name manually. You can also specify the installation location. I'm going to go ahead and leave it to the default Program Files Autodesk 3D Studio Max 2010. You can choose whether or not the Mental Ray Satellite Service is installed and what port it will be using. And you can also choose to install additional files. On the next screen, it will automatically contact the network if you are connected and detect if there are any service packs or hotfixes available from Autodesk for the product you are installing. In this case, it is detected that there is a hotfix available for 3D Studio Max 2010. So you can choose either to go ahead and download and include this now, or you can select the option to not include the service pack at this time. I'm going to go ahead and choose not to include the service pack at this time. Now that we're done with the configuration, we're going to go ahead and click on Configuration Complete. You'll notice that there are additional options here. If you want to specify more details about the installation for 3D Studio Max 2010 and Backburner. And there's also the option for the tutorials. So once you've done with all of these tabs, you'll just click on Configuration Complete to indicate that you have configured your deployment. So you'll see here that the changes that we made are reflected in the deployment settings. It's recorded all of the details regarding the fact that this is a network license and the actual server name here. Next, we'll want to click on Create Deployment. And at this point, it will go ahead and create the admin image. Once the wizard has finished creating the deployment, the Deployment Complete page will be displayed. To install all the products included in the deployment, the users will just need to click on the shortcut link that has been created within the network share. You can also modify the deployment later if needed. If we look at the network share, you'll see the shortcut is displayed here, and the admin image containing all of the installation is contained within a folder underneath the network share. You've now created a network deployment for 3D Studio Max and you're ready to install onto your client workstations.